Okay, so here's a nasty drift velocity question. First thing that's nasty about it is it's very wordy, so we need to read through the words and pick out what's important. So we have wire B is three times longer, twice as thick. Compare the drift velocity in both wires if they are in series with each other, but A has twice the number of free charge carriers. Right, well, it's not very well written, but that's that's my fault. And sometimes you get questions like this. First of all, we need to identify what formulas we're going to start with. Well, we only know one formula with drift velocity, and it's this one here. So it's I equals NAQV, where N is the charge carrier density, so the number of charge carriers per meter cubed. A is the cross-sectional area. Q is the charge per carrier, and V is the drift velocity. Uh, there's no mention of L at all, no mention of length. So it seems as if, initially, the three times longer part might be a total red herring, and they do like to do that in exam questions every so often. Well, what else do we know? Well, we know they're in series with each other. So that tells us that the current in one must be the same as the current in the other. So that, that gives us this green formula, IA equals IB, which is really, really important. Now, it's a bit sneaky here, and you've got to watch out for this. They've told you that wire B is twice as thick as wire A. Well, thickness is measured in, in meters. It's, it's, a, it's the diameter. It's not the area. So we don't actually have the area. So we're going to need to use the formula for area, which is pi d squared over 4. And we get that from pi r squared. Right, so if we start with IA equals IB, so the current in A equals current B. Then going to rewrite the current in A, because we don't know that. We know the NAQV. We need all that business. So I'm going to rewrite it like this. It looks nasty. Uh, the subscript, so the little a, indicates I'm talking about A. So NA is the number of charge carriers in A. AA is the area of A. QA, charge on an electron in A, in this case, most likely. Uh, and VA is the... Uh, Drift velocity in A. And I'm going to make it equal to B because IA equals IB. Right, I have no numbers to play with really, so I'm going to have to start making assumptions. So, NA. Well, I know that the number of charge carriers in A is twice that of B, so I'm going to say NA equals 2, NB equals 1. Doesn't matter if it's realistic or not, it's, it's absolutely fine. DA. Well, I know DB is twice as thick, so the diameter of A is, is 1, the diameter of B is 2. I think I want to calculate the area. Now I get these values here, and I'm going to leave pi in. I'm not going to try and work it out in decimal or anything else. You can if you want, but if you if you avoid doing that, you won't get any rounding errors. So I get AA is pi over four. AB equals pi. The charge the charge the charge carrier um, charge. <laughs> so the electron charge. I'll just call it one in both. Uh, makes it a lot easier. And I know VA. I'll say that's equal to one. And I want to work out what VB is. Right. So I put those numbers in. To my formula, I get that. The only unknown is VB, and it's a pretty straightforward formula. Then I rearrange it, and I end up with VB equals 0 0.5. Well, what does that tell me? Well, if I look back to VA, VA was 1, VB is 0 0.5, so VB is half as big as VA. And that's how you'd answer a nasty drift velocity question.